Good morning, Mr. President, members of the Commission. I'm Barclay Howden, Director General of the Directorate of Power Reactor Regulation. Today I have the pleasure to present, for information, the Regulatory Oversight Report for Canadian Nuclear Power Plants, 2014 edition. The report, hereafter referred to as the NPP report, provides a summary of the regulatory oversight and safety performance of Canadian nuclear power plants. Included in the report is the annual update on the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident response, the neutron overpower protection update, and an update on the Pickering Risk Improvement Plan and the Aging Management Program. As well, the presentation includes an update on the Darlington New Nuclear Project. The NPP report will be presented by the management team from the Directorate of Power Reactor Regulation. They are assisted by directors from the technical support branch who are available to answer any technical questions the Commission may have. Today's presentation will begin with highlights of the nuclear power industry safety performance in 2014. The presentation will continue with details regarding the station's safety performance and regulatory developments. Towards the end, the presentation will focus on industry regulatory developments and will close with general remarks. Before I turn the presentation over to the directors, I'd like to present the executive summary of the industry safety performance. This summary will provide you with the context for the station's specific highlights, including current challenges the industry is facing. As summarized on this slide, CNSC staff have made the following observations with respect to the safety performance of nuclear power plants. There were no serious process failures of operating systems at any nuclear power plant that could potentially challenge protective barriers. No member of the Canadian public received a radiation dose above the regulatory limit of one millisievert per year. There were no exposures of nuclear energy workers at Canadian nuclear power plants above the regulatory dose limit of 50 millisieverts per year. There were no environmental releases from the nuclear power plants above the derived released limits. The frequency and severity of injuries and accidents involving workers were minimal. In fact, the overall accident severity rate and the accident frequency for Canadian nuclear power plants remained lower than that of other Canadian industries. All licensees complied with their license conditions concerning Canada's international obligations, and no NPP events above the lowest INIS level were reported to the International Atomic Energy Agency. I'd like to point out here that these positive outcomes were the result of a multitude of provisions undertaken by each licensee and are, in general, a reflection of good organizational management and control. This slide summarizes the ratings for the safety and control areas and the integrated plant ratings for the licensees and the industry as a whole. As you may recall, we have four rating categories, namely fully satisfactory, satisfactory, below expectations, and unacceptable. Regarding the overall station safety performance, the integrated plant ratings were fully satisfactory for Darlington and Bruce B, and satisfactory for the remaining stations. The integrated plant rating for Bruce B improved from satisfactory in 2014 to, two th to fully satisfactory in 2000, from 2013 to 2014, fully satisfactory now. For the remaining stations, their integrated plant ratings were unchanged from the previous year. Across the industry, the average ratings were fully satisfactory for conventional health and safety and security as they were in 2013. In 2014, the industry waste management rating improved to fully satisfactory. The industry rating for the remaining 11 safety control areas were satisfactory. Overall for the stations, 14 safety and control areas were fully satisfactory and the remainder were satisfactory. This represents an improvement of three additional fully satisfactory ratings in comparison to 2013. No safety and control areas were rated as below expectations or unacceptable. The absence of below expectations or unacceptable ratings is the same result as in 2013. Reflecting, reflecting CNSC's confidence in the licensee's safety performance during 2014. NPP ratings are based on findings from inspections, desktop reviews, and other compliance verification activities conducted by CNSC staff. For the first time since the SCA framework was introduced in 2010, there were no medium or high rated findings assessed. This outcome is a reflection of the continuous improvements being made by the NPP licensees. CNSC's commitment to safety and regulatory excellence led to ever-increasing focus on the areas which are indicated on this slide. 
Firstly, industry continued in its efforts towards the recategorization of the remaining CANDU safety issues, or CSIs. By February 2015, there were six CSIs to be recategorized. Three of these were large loss of coolant, or L large loca CSIs, and three were non large loca CSIs. Industry is making good progress on all the remaining CSIs, and CNSC staff are monitoring the effort. A commission member document giving an update on the status of the CSIs is being prepared for presentation to the commission in 2016. Secondly, increased attention was directed to oversight of aging facilities. Following CNSC staff review of safety assessments of aging management programs and inspections of pressure tubes and feeders, the commission approved the operation of the Bruce A and B and the Pickering reactors up to 247,000 equivalent full power hours. CNSC is also focusing on oversight of licensees as they prepare units for refurbishment or safe continued operation. In addition, CNSC staff continued to focus on the conduct of transitioning activities from operations to safe storage at Chantilly 2 during 2014, followed by future decommissioning. Lastly, CNSC strives to continuously improve the safety of operating facilities through the introduction of modernized regulatory documents and safety standards into operating licenses. Furthermore, in response to the Fukushima Daiichi accident, CNSC requested each licensee to implement safety upgrades to reduce the risk of accidents and to demonstrate effective emergency management. In the area of emergency preparedness, CNSC published in 2014 Reg Doc 2.10.1, Nuclear Emergency Preparedness and Response, which includes a requirement for NPP operators to provide support to provincial and municipal authorities for the implementation of potassium iodide, or KI, pre-distribution. All licensees have either completed their pre-distribution or are on track to complete by December 2015 target date. Details of pre-distribution are as follows. OPG has planned a public campaign for September 2015. Pre-distribution will occur in October 2015, with completion by the end of November 2015. Bruce Power has procured and started the distribution of KI pills within their 10-kilometer primary zone and targets completion by the end of the summer 2015. New Brunswick Power has already distributed KI pills within their 20-kilometer planning zone since 1982. An update on KI present distribution will be given at the next Commission meeting. The sixth progress report on the status of the review of the new Enhanced Neutron Overpower Protection, or ENOP, methodology has been included in the 2014 NPP report. NOP trip set points are designed to provide effective reactor protection through tripping the reactor whenever the neutron flux reaches a pre-established value, primarily in response to slow loss of regulation events. Bruce Power and Ontario Power Generation have completed all major activities related to NOP tech methodology and submitted reports documenting results during 2014. CNSC concluded from their review of the licensee's submissions that the installed NOP trip set points provide adequate margins for slow loss of regulation events and that no compensatory measures are required until August 2017. In the area of enhanced NOP, work is in progress, but ENOP has not been accepted by CNSC staff. In March 2015, Bruce Power and OPG submitted their final responses to CNSC staff comments with respect to measures and improvements the licensees were making to address the path forward for acceptance of the enhanced methodology. CNSC staff are currently reviewing the licensees' responses. A major joint nuclear exercise, emergency response exercise entitled Exercise Unified Response was held from May 26 to 28, 2014 at the Darlington Nuclear Power Plant. This exercise involved OPG and over 50 off-site agencies, including CNSC. It provided an opportunity for emergency response organizations to test and improve their capabilities. Exercise Unified Response was a success, resulting in valuable lessons learned and experiences for the participants. An update on the exercise will be presented to the Commission by CNSC staff in December 2015. I will now ask Mr. Peter Corcoran, Director of the Power Reactor Licensing and Compliance Integration Division, to provide background information on the annual NPP report and present the industry benchmarking of safety performance indicators. Thank you, Mr. Howden. Good morning, Mr. President and members of the Commission. 
I will provide background information on this NPP report and its format, the public comment process conducted earlier this summer, and information on Canada's nuclear power plants. CNSC staff have established a compliance verification program which lays out the conduct of activities such as surveillance and monitoring by on-site inspectors, inspections and desktop reviews. The results from this program are used by CNSC staff to determine the safety performance and the ratings that are provided in the NPP report. CNSC inspectors track actions against licensees until they are closed and verify the closures through follow-up inspections. More than 1,100 findings were derived from CNSC compliance activities and assessed by CNSC staff to provide the ratings for the NPP report. Additionally, NPP licensees submitted during the year 378 event reports and 122 scheduled reports, and these were reviewed and assessed by CNSC staff also. NPP licensees are responsible for ensuring safe operation of their stations, whereas CNSC staff independently verify the licensee's performance. As shown in this table, the compliance verification activities conducted by CNSC staff included inspections, event reviews, and other compliance activities. These activities represent over 17,000 person days of effort by CNSC staff. As a result of the compliance activities conducted during 2014, CNSC staff concluded that all licensees operated their reactors in a safe manner and ensured compliance with regulatory requirements. I would also like to point out that the information in this table was not included in the draft NPP report. However, it will be added to the published report next month and it will be included in the report going forward. CNSC staff assessed the safety performance of licensees using a ratings methodology that was established in 2010 and is based on multiple sources of inputs covering 14 safety and control areas. The inputs for the assessments include findings ex extracted from inspections, field rounds and desktop reviews. These findings come from the assessments conducted by CNSC staff at the specific area levels within each of the SCAs. The specific area ratings are then rolled up into a compu computational method and in certain cases there is the need for professional judgment where the final assessment falls on or near the interface between two ratings. This assessment process is conducted for all safety and control areas. The SCA ratings are combined using weighting factors to produce the integrated plant ratings, that is, the overall rating for each nuclear power plant. During 2014, CNSC staff presented to the Commission two event initial reports for events that had the potential for involvement of the Commission with respect to decision-making responsibilities. CNSC staff followed up on the licensee's corrective actions for each of these events and concurred with the actions implemented. There were no event initial reports submitted for Bruce A&B, for Jean Tilly 2, or for Point Le Pro in 2014. The 2014 NPP report was posted on the CNSC website for public comment from June 16th to July 16th of this year. The posting was announced on the CNSC website, through social media, and through the CNSC mail-out list. In addition, advertisements were placed in 15 Canadian newspapers. Two interventions were received on the report. The comments can be summarized as follows. Positive feedback on the thoroughness of the report, and a continuing concern regarding the licensee's ability to qualify sufficient numbers of certified staff, though there was acknowledgement by the intervener of improvements having been made in this area. During 2014, CNSC staff assessed the licensee's personnel certification programs and determined that these meet regulatory requirements. CNSC staff are satisfied 
with the ability of the licensees to qualify staff for certified positions. As this map shows, there are four multi-unit plants in Ontario and one single unit plant in each of Quebec and New Brunswick. In 2014, six nuclear power plants had operating licenses for a total of 22 reactors in Canada. Of this total, 19 reactors were operating during the year. The reactor at Gentilly 2 completed the transition to the safe storage state on December 2, 2014. At Pickering, Units 2 and 3 remain in safe storage, consistent with previous years after they were defueled in 2008. The Canadian nuclear power industry continues to provide over 15% of Canada's electricity supply. During 2014, in Ontario, 62% of the electricity produced in the province was generated at nuclear power plants, and for New Brunswick, 28% of the electricity provided was from a single nuclear power plant. These percentages highlight the contribution this industry makes to Canada's energy production. CNSC is committed to effective regulatory oversight of this industry. This graphic depicts the status of each of the 22 licensed reactors, nuclear power reactors, in Canada at the end of 2014. Of the total, and as stated earlier, 19 reactors are operating or have been returned to service as shown by the blue and green bundles, respectively. And these and three reactors are in a safe storage state as depicted here by the red bundles. In 2014, the Gentilly 2 station completed the transition to a safe storage state following the 2012 decision to end operations. This station is indicated on the slide in red. This ends the background section of the presentation. I will now continue with a brief summary of industry benchmarking for 2014. As you may recall, CNSC began to report on com performance comparisons between the Canadian nuclear plant licensees and other national and international organizations a few years ago. The approach has continued to evolve and comparisons involving five performance indicators, some of which are benchmarked, will be presented here today. As shown in this slide, the first comparison is the number of unplanned reactor trips per 7,000 operating hours. I should perhaps point out at this point that 7,000 approximates the number of operating hours in a year for most nuclear power plants around the world. The data on this slide shows the performance of Canadian nuclear operators in comparison to that of the World Association of Nuclear Operators, or WANO. It can be seen that in 2014, the number of reactor trips for Canadian reactors is significantly better, that is lower, than the industry performance target of 0.5 or half a reactor trip per 7,000 operating hours and remains lower than the WANO value. The Canadian industry trip rate has increased slightly in 2014, but the change was not considered significant. Overall, the Canadian industry is maintaining a low trip rate. This next figure compares the unplanned capability loss factor for Canada versus WANO values. WANO uses this indicator to monitor industry's progress in minimizing outage time and power reductions that result from unplanned equipment failures or other conditions, such as maintenance outage extensions, forced outages, and unplanned load reductions. This slide does not represent a safety issue, but focuses instead on electrical power output. The indicator reflects the effectiveness of plant management in maintaining systems available for electrical generation. The darker colored regions at the bottom of the bar graph represent the UCLF. The lighter colored regions represent the total act actual energy production capability, taking into account energy losses due to planned outages. Under Regulatory Document 3.1.1, which became effective in 2015, 
Additional safety performance indicators that align with WANO will be available in future NPP reports. This next slide, accident frequency, is a measure of the number of reportable injuries resulting in lost time or medical treatment and the number of fatalities at a station per 200,000 person hours worked. This slide shows the accident frequency for the Canadian nuclear industry, indicated in light blue, versus other Canadian industries and workplaces. And in case you can't read it, I'll just point out that the blue is WorkSafe New Brunswick, the bright blue is WorkSafe BC, the purple is the Canadian Electricity Association, and the red is the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission. The, it can be seen that the accident frequency for the Canadian nuclear industry remains very low and lower than other Canadian workplaces. The accident frequency for the Canadian nuclear industry and for all licensees decreased in 2014. Moreover, the Canadian nuclear industry continues to be a safe industry in terms of the frequency of workplace accidents. Staff also wish to point out that there were no work-related fatalities at Canadian nuclear power plants in 2014. This slide shows the estimated annual dose to the public, which is attributed to both airborne emissions and liquid releases from Canadian nuclear power plants. In 2014, this was well below the one millisievert dose limit for members of the public for all Canadian nuclear power plants. In fact, they were approximately 1,000 times lower. Please note that because the doses are very low, we have used a logarithmic scale on the left. Each unit on a logarithmic scale represents a tenfold increase in the value of the estimated dose. The public dose data confirms that Canadian licensees programs continue to be effective in protecting the public and the environment from radiological releases. The dose to the public is only a very small fraction of the regulatory dose limit. This graph also shows that the doses from Canadian NPPs are much lower than the average annual effective doses from natural background both in Canada and worldwide. This next slide shows the distribution of effective doses to workers for 2014, as well as the five-year trend. The percentage of workers at Canadian nuclear power plants received a total effective dose of less than one millisievert has remained higher than 80% or has remained 80% or higher since 2010 a testament to the continued effectiveness of the licensee's radiation protection programs. CNSC staff note that this has increased to 85% of the workers in 2014. I would further point out that no worker among the more than 25,000 monitored received a dose exceeding the regulatory dose limit of 50 millisieverts per year in 2014. The radiation protection programs implemented by licensees are protecting workers in the Canadian nuclear power industry and resulting in low numbers of workers in the higher dose ranges as shown on this slide. The presentation will transition now to the summaries for the individual stations. Mr. Barclay Howden will begin by covering the Bruce A and B and Darlington stations. Thank you Mr. Corcoran. Bruce Power is licensed to operate the Bruce A and B nuclear generating stations, each located on the shores of Lake Huron. Both stations consist of four CANDU units each. In 2014, at the Bruce site, all eight units were operational. In May 2015, following four days of public hearing in Concarden, the Commission renewed the Bruce A and B licenses as a single license. The new license is for a five-year period and will expire in 2020. As the licenses were just renewed through an extensive licensing process with detailed reasons for decision published on July 9, 2015, staff conclude there is no new information to report to the Commission. Thus, I'll go through the slides fairly quickly. It should be pointed out that the NPP report was, prior, was prepared prior to the publishing of the detailed reasons for decision. 
This table shows the 2014 performance ratings for the safety and control areas for both Bruce A and B. Overall, the integrated ratings for Bruce A remained at satisfactory, while the integrated rating for Bruce B improved to fully satisfactory. Here are the good practices at Bruce A and B. In addition, security was also fully satisfactory in 2014. This slide provides an update on the Fisheries Act authorization process. CNSC staff have concluded that licensed activities at Bruce Power, as authorized by the Nuclear Safety and Control Act, have had no significant impact on the fish population. Hence, the environment is being protected. A new license is in place now, and the new license conditions handbook has been updated with the information outlined in this slide. This slide summarizes the major projects and initiatives that were discussed during the license renewal hearing. In particular, the 37M fuel project and the Bruce A environmental assessment follow-up program. I will now move on to the Darlington facility. Ontario Power Generation is licensed to operate the Darlington nuclear power plant, which consists of four units. All four units at Darlington were operational in 2014. OPG also operates at this site a tritium removal facility which is designed to reduce levels of radioactive tritium in the heavy water. As part one of the license renewal hearing was held yesterday, we're not going to go through the slides in detail. This table shows the performance ratings for the safety and control areas for Darlington. Overall, Darlington received an integrated plant rating of fully satisfactory. Darlington has received this rating consistently for the past seven years. Here are the good practices at Darlington. In addition, operating performance was also fully satisfactory in 2014. OPG is also addressing some work safety challenges in conventional health and safety. This uh, slide provides a history of the license amendments and license conditions handbook revisions up to yesterday. So it's right up to date. This slide summarizes the refurbishment information that was presented yesterday to the Commission. Shown in this slide is an outline of the study of the consequences of a hypothetical severe nuclear accident that was touched upon yesterday. The final English version of the report will be made available to the public today. The English and French versions will also be published to our website in September. The conclusions from the study are summarized in this slide. That concludes the summary on Darlington. I'll now turn over the presentation to Mr. Miguel Santini, Director of the Pickering Regulatory Program Division. Thank you, Mr. Howland. Good morning, members of the, of the Commission and Mr. President. The Pickering Nuclear Generated Station consists of eight reactor units. This table shows the 2014 performance ratings for the safety and control areas at Pickering. The performance in radiation protection and in security remained unchanged and fully satisfactory in 2014. The performance for Pickering in the remaining 12 safety and control areas were satisfactory. Overall, the integrated plant rating for Pickering was satisfactory in 2014 and changed from the previous years. Now, I would like to discuss Pickering safety performance highlights, focusing first on good, good practices. In the area of radiation protection, OPG continues to implement at Pickering a highly effective, effective and well-documented ALARA program, which is based on industry best practice. Under security, it is noted that OPG maintains a robust and efficient nuclear response force. In addition, OPG has implemented well-designed and effective drills and exercises at Pickering. The introduction of enhanced screening technology has improved access control at this station. The Commission removed the regulatory hold point for continued operations from the Pickering license in 2014. The Commission requested that OPG produces an annual update on the aging management program and fitness for service of major components and on the detailed risk improvement plan. 
In 2014, MPP report contains the 2000, sorry, 2014 MPP report contains the second annual update of these topics. Here we present the highlights of these submissions. First, an update on the peak and aging management program and fitness for service for major components. The planned inspections of fuel channels, feeders, and steam generators were completed as per their scope. The following was determined through these inspections. The mean diameter of the pressure tubes were within the service limits. The highest hydrogen concentration in pressure tubes were within service limits. The inspected feeders had wall thickness greater than the minimum allowable. And finally, no steam generators exceeded the limit of tube plugging. Overall, CNSC staff are satisfied with the results of the 2014 major components inspections and confirm the findings met that CNSC regulatory requirements. The second request by the Commission was for OPG to submit an annual update of the initiatives to further reduce the risk identified through the PSA at the plant. In compliance with this request, OPG submitted the status of implementation of the risk reduction plan. The initiatives which involve physical improvements to the plant include extension of auxiliary power supply emission times for to 12, 72 hours, pardon, upgrades to the fire protection barriers on the cable trays, and modification to the emergency makeup water supply to heat transport system and to the boilers. Other improvements, such as refinement of the models or addition of the Fukushima upgrades modeling, also improve the final results results of the core damage frequency or large release frequency of the PSA. For instance, crediting the phase one emergency mitigating equipment or EME in the PSA models reduce the core damage frequency up to 80% and the large release frequency up to 83%. Phase two EME and credit of the severe accident management guidelines also from the Fukushima Action Plan are expected to further reduce the core damage frequency and largely frequency results. CNC staff are satisfied with the current status of OPG implementation of the risk reduction plan. On whole site probabilistic safety assessment, the development of a pilot project for the Pickering site is continuing and on target for completion in 2017. During the reporting period, the Pickering operating license was amended once and the license condition handbook was also revised once. Details of these amendments and revisions are given in the CMD and here we present the reasons for the amendment and the significant changes to the LCH. Regarding projects as in, and initiatives underway at the station, I will describe the activities related to management of end of life. OPG continues with planning and implement, implementing measures to ensure safe operation of Pickering to the end of commercial operation. The continued operation plan, or COP, covers the implementation of the Pickering B integrated safety review to ensure safe operation beyond 210,000 equivalent full power hours. Only three actions remain open in the COP and it is targeted for completion by December 2015. The Sustainable Operation Plan, or SOP, will, will become effective on January 2016 and it is focused on actions required to ensure the continued safe operation of all units approaching the end of commercial operation. Finally, in accordance with the operating license, OPG has to submit to the CNSC by June 30th, 2017, the permanent shutdown dates for the Pickering reactors. I will now, now turn over the presentation to Monsieur Benoit Poulet, the Director de la Division du Programme de Reglementation de Chantilly, Point le pro. Merci, M. Santini. M. le Président, membre de la Commission, bonjour. 
Gentil 2 est une centrale à tranche unique de type Candu 600, exploitée par Hydro-Québec. L'exploitation commerciale de Gentil 2 a pris fin le 28 décembre 2012. Le réacteur a alors été mis à l'arrêt et toute production d'énergie électrique a cessé. Au cours de l'année 2014, Gentil 2 était en transition vers l'état de stockage sûr et a complété cette transition et atteint l'état de stockage sûr le 2 décembre 2014. Le présent permis d'exploitation est en vigueur depuis le 1er juillet 2011 et expire le 30 juin 2016. En 2014, Hydro-Québec a demandé à la Commission de modifier le permis de Gentil 2 afin de prendre compte de l'état cœur déchargé et du passage à l'état de stockage sûr. La Commission a revu et accepté cette demande et la modification de permis a été complétée le 22 juillet 2014. Ce tableau montre les codes de rendement attribués à Gentil 2 pour l'année 2014 pour chacun des domaines de sûreté et de réglementation. Le rendement de Gentil 2 pour chacun des domaines de sûreté et de réglementation à la centrale Gentil 2 a été jugé satisfaisant. Le rendement global à la centrale a lui aussi été jugé satisfaisant. Hydro-Québec a poursuivi les travaux de transition requis pour placer la centrale dans un état de stockage sûr tout au long de l'année 2014. Hydro-Québec a terminé le drainage et l'assèchement des principaux systèmes nucléaires. Le plan de fin d'exploitation a été examiné et accepté par le personnel de la CCSN en mai 2014. Le personnel de la CCSN a conclu que les plans et les procédures d'Hydro-Québec rencontrent les exigences réglementaires et qu'ils ont été mis en œuvre de manière à assurer la réalisation sécuritaire des activités et des opérations. Gentil 2 a atteint l'état de stockage sûr avec le combustible usé stocké dans les piscines de stockage de l'installation prévue à cet effet le 2 décembre 2014. En 2014, Hydro-Québec a terminé la révision du rapport de sûreté de Gentil 2 en conformité avec les exigences réglementaires. Le personnel de la CCSN avait assisté à une réunion technique pour discuter de la méthodologie employée avant la soumission du rapport. Le personnel de la CCSN s'affaire prise actuellement à examiner le rapport de sûreté maintenant révisé. Dans le domaine de la protection incendie, Hydro-Québec a soumis son programme révisé de protection incendie en 2014. Le personnel de la CCSN a examiné le programme et conclu qu'il était acceptable et conforme aux exigences. Le domaine d'intérêt réglementaire pour Gentil 2 en 2014 était l'aptitude fonctionnelle. Hydro-Québec a soumis, en juillet 2014, des mises à jour de ses programmes de surveillance et d'inspection pour les structures, systèmes et composants importants sur le plan de la sûreté. Le personnel de la CCSN a revu ses programmes et a rencontré des employés d'Hydro-Québec plus tôt cette année, en avril 2015, pour préciser l'information et les révisions requises pour que les programmes rencontrent les exigences réglementaires. Les programmes de surveillance et d'inspection d'Hydro-Québec seront sujets à une inspection par le personnel de la CCSN plus tard cet automne. Au cours de la période de rapport, le permis d'exploitation a été modifié une fois par la Commission. Cette modification avait pour objectif de mieux aligner les exigences du permis avec la réalisation des activités de stabilisation et la nouvelle configuration des systèmes et de l'équipement de la centrale. Le manuel des conditions de permis a aussi été révisé une fois. À titre d'exemple, le manuel des conditions de permis a été modifié pour inclure des mises à jour aux documents d'application de la réglementation, notamment la mise en œuvre du RegDoc 3.1.1, qui a, été remplacé, qui a remplacé le document S-99. I will now continue with the Point Lepro Generating Station Safety Assessment portion of the report. The Point Lepro Nuclear Power Plant consists of a single CANDU 600 reactor that is operated by the New Brunswick Power Corporation. The Point Lepro Generating Station was operational throughout 2014. 
The operating license was renewed in February 2012, and it will expire in June 2017. This table shows the 2014 performance ratings for the safety and control areas at Point La Pro. The performance of this station in the conventional health and safety remained at fully satisfactory, while the remaining safety and control areas were rated as satisfactory. Overall, the integrated plant rating for Point Le Pro was satisfactory, the same as it was in the previous year. I would now like to discuss the Point Le Pro safety performance highlights, focusing first <coughs> on the good practices. CNC staff rated conventional health and safety at Point Le Pro as fully satisfactory. In 2014, there were no lost time injuries at the station. The accident severity rate and the accident frequency both decreased to zero during the year, and these were the lowest observed in the industry. In the area of emergency management and fire protection, CNC staff confirmed that the industrial fire brigade equipment and performance enhancements were successfully deployed in 2014. New Brunswick Power completed the implementation of a comprehensive fire response program, which includes effective response capability, procedures, and training. In addition to the good practices, New Brunswick Power is also addressing a number of areas of regulatory focus concerning the Point La Pro generating station. When renewing the license in 2012, the Commission decided to include a regulatory hold point <coughs> which required New Brunswick Power to comply with CSA standard N293-07, fire protection for Candu <coughs> nuclear power plants, by December 31, 2014. This hold point was removed in mid-December 2014, pursuant to the license condition by the Executive Vice President following CNC staff confirmation through evaluations and inspections that New Brunswick Power had completed the improvements required to comply with this CSA standard. In the area of seismic qualification, the Commission required that New Brunswick Power complete a site-specific seismic hazard assessment and share the results through its public information program. The seismic hazard assessment was submitted to CNSC in May 2015. This assessment is currently being reviewed by CNSC staff and Natural Resource Canada staff, and the review will be completed by the end of December 2015. In addition, New Brunswick Power submitted tsunami and wind hazard studies in 2015 and requested closure of Fukushima action item 2.1.1 and 2.1.2. These were the only Fukushima action item that still remained open for this licensee. CNEC staff is currently reviewing the submissions and this review is also expected to be completed by the end of December 2015. During the reporting period, the Point Le Pro operating license was amended twice and the license conditions handbook was revised three times. Details of the amendments and revisions are given in the CMD and this slide presents the reason for the amendments and the significant changes to the license conditions handbook. Regarding projects and initiatives at Point Le Pro, I would like to describe the, the efforts in 2014 in the environmental protection, safety and control area. New Brunswick Power continued to implement an effective environmental risk assessment, or ERA for short, and management program in accordance with CNSC requirements. New Brunswick Power submitted the Point Le Pro ERA for CNSC review in June of 2015. New Brunswick Power will review and update its ERA in accordance with CSA standard N288.6 to ensure it remains current with existing operations. Fish impingement monitoring was conducted at Point Le Pro in 2013 and in 2014, and larval and egg entrainment monitoring began in 2015. CNEC staff is satisfied with the implementation of the monitoring program by New Brunswick Power and are currently reviewing the results with Fisheries and Oceans Canada staff. 
New Brunswick Power is required to conduct a self-assessment and submit the data for review by CNSC staff to determine whether an application for a Fisheries Act authorization is required. This concludes the Gentil 2 and Pointe Le Pro presentations. Thank you for your attention. I will now turn the, turn the presentation back to Mr. Howden. Thank you, Mr. Poulet. Uh, before I start this section, I just make a correction on the record about the SARP report, which is the study of consequences of a hypothetical severe nuclear accident. Uh, the report won't be published today, but it'll be republished published very shortly. They're, they're very close. So I jumped the gun a little bit on our staff in the back of the room there. Um, this next section of the presentation will focus on the progress of industry in regulatory developments. Specifically, the section will provide the annual update on the industry response to the Fukushima Daiichi accident. Also, it will provide the annual update on the new nuclear project being undertaken by OPG at Darlington. Licensees are continuing to address the 36 Fukushima action items, or FAIs, as detailed in the CNSC Integrated Action Plan. Since the last Fukushima update, Canadian NPP licensees submitted update reports number 5 and 6. These reports provided details of the activities completed by licensees together with the status on the implementation of the Fukushima follow-up activities. To date, all short-term FAIs are closed. All medium-term FAIs are closed for all stations with the ex exception of two FAIs. A request for it was received from New Brunswick Power in June 2015 for the closure of the two remaining, remaining medium-term FAIs, and this request is being reviewed by CNSC staff. The industry is expected to be, the review is expected to be completed by the end of 2015. Overall, the industry is on target to, to complete all FAIs by the December 2015 deadline. To follow through on the closure of FAIs, station-specific actions were raised where necessary to monitor FAI implementation through the Compliance Verification Program. CNSC staff are conducting compliance oversight of Fukushima-related modifications and upgrades, including emergency mitigating equipment that has been purchased, installed, and made operational. A four-level approach for inspection has been established, including field verifications, confirmation of equipment commissioning, sampling verification, and demonstration of performance. Additionally, CNSC staff have witnessed and participated in two separate large-scale exercises, including Bruce Power's Exercise Huron Challenge in 2012 and OPG's Exercise Unified Response in 2014. The CNSC Baseline Compliance Verification Program now includes inspection of licensees' emergency mitigating equipment as per the established CNSC Routine Inspection Program. This slide provides the annual update on the Darlington New Nuclear Project. On August 17, 2012, a panel of the Commission issued a power reactor site preparation license to OPG for the Darlington New Nuclear Project for a 10-year period until August 17, 2022. However, on May 14, 2014, the Federal Court released its decision on the Judicial Review of the Environmental Assessment, or EA, and ruled that the EA was to be returned to the Joint Review Panel for further review and the license to prepare a site was quashed. During 2014, CNSC staff coordinated discussions involving OPG, Ontario Ministries, local municipalities, and stakeholders on land use planning as part of the follow-up. In June 2014, federal court decision was appealed and the arguments before the Court of Appeal were heard on June 2, 2015. The decision is still pending. In the meantime, OPG continues to pursue, at its own discretion, several work activities for which a license is not required, including bank swallow monitoring and mitigation and land use planning. And as I mentioned, we were coordinating some of the work in that area. The next slide will summarize the overall concluding remarks on the safety performance of the nuclear power plants in Canada and safety improvements being introduced by licensees. Based on all the compliance activities, CNSC staff made a number of general conclusions with respect to safety performance of NPPs in Canada in 2014. Namely, nuclear power plants operated safely, the integrated plant ratings were determined to be fully satisfactory for Darlington and Bruce B and satisfactory for the remaining stations. All licensees received either satisfactory or fully satisfactory ratings for their safety control areas. Gentilly 2 has completed its transition to the safe storage state. 
licensees are implementing safety enhancements by addressing action items and making continuous improvements to the safe operation of their facilities. The industry is on target to complete all Fukushima actions by December 2015 as per the CNSC Integrated Action Plan. Licensees are continuing their work with implementing safety upgrades to further reduce the risk of accidents and to resolve can-do safety issues. CNSC staff are monitoring the licensees' efforts in this area. Mr. President, members of the Commission, this concludes the presentation of the Regulatory Oversight Report for Canadian Nuclear Power Plants, 2014 edition. Thank you for your attention, and staff are available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you.